Hello, I'm Tony Dubio, Principal Specialist Solutions Architect working for Red Hat, and today I'd like to share with you a demonstration of Netbox and the Ansible Automation Platform that I recently presented at Cisco Live San Diego. Netbox will serve as the source of truth for the dynamic inventory for the Ansible Automation Platform, as well as the intended configuration state up front for the Cisco switching devices in this demonstration. We're going to highlight Netbox's branching feature. This feature is um, a Git repo-like feature for the database in Netbox that allows you to configure either device templates or um, config context on a test branch and then hand that over for review. We're also going to set up Netbox event rules. So this allows you to pass those same configurations to the event-driven Ansible um, by using webhooks. So these webhooks would only be sent when you merge the test branch after review into the main branch, and then that would um, send the webhook, launch the webhook to the EDA. The event-driven Ansible will receive the webhook. It will evaluate the data based off of conditionals and make a decision on what to do for an action. So the response here will be to trigger a workflow in the automation controller. First to do a configuration drift check against the configuration, the intended config from the source of truth, that config context that was sent, and it will compare that against the running configuration in the catalyst switches in our lab environment. Um, we also have a human in the loop to allow for an approval node, which will say, okay, we're good with the configs, go ahead and apply the configuration to the catalyst switches. Let's start with Netbox. Um, we've created some event roles and webhooks. So the first one is the NTP IOS. So we have a event role that will trigger the NTP webhook whenever we create a configuration and merge that configuration from the test branch into the main branch. Then it will send the webhook to the EDA and then EDA can evaluate it. So how EDA evaluates it is through a rule book. So think of a rule book is much like a playbook. It's a YAML file. We, instead of having plays and tasks, we have sources and rules. So if we look at the source, we can see that our source is a webhook that we're listening on port 5001. When we look into the rule, we can see that we set up a condition. The condition is if we receive a webhook that is that has payload name of NTP underscore ILS, then we will further evaluate it and move to an action where we will collect that data and create extra variables to pass to a workflow template in the Ansible Automation Controller and extra variables are passed from the payload of the webhook. This is in contrast to the Automation Controller where we normally have to manually launch a workflow, job template, playbook, or schedule it to run. Here, as we look at the history of the, um, the actual rulebook activation, we can see that we're just sitting here and we're waiting uh, for that Netbox webhook. We're just listening and waiting. So as soon as that's triggered, we'll evaluate it, and then that could trigger our action, and the, the workflow would run from that. So now let's go ahead and create a new branch called Cisco Live as our test branch. And we'll go into provisioning on this um, active test branch and make a change there. So that way we can make a change, review it, and not send it yet to the EDA. So as we go into our branch, and uh, we'll go into provisioning, and we're going to configure a config context, which allows us to send structured data, as opposed to a config template, which is a Jinja2 template that's uh, more CLI specific with the native configuration. So here, what we're doing is we're creating an NTP configuration, and we want to edit it. So we're gonna change it from dot seven to dot two, and this becomes our new base configuration, or, or what we call our intended configuration um, for the NTP, and the NTP servers in particular. Now, when we save this, we haven't sent it yet to EDA, so we shouldn't have launched a job yet in the automation controller, which we have validated that um, nothing has kicked off yet. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make a change uh, to a switch. So let's go into leaf one, and let's add something out of band so that we can detect drift. So if we make a change here from the command line out of band, then we should detect that change is different than the front end source of truth configuration or our intended configuration that was sent over as config context for NTP from the netbox. So this is a 
This is a server that is, is not the intended NTP server, so we'll be able to detect that later in our drift check. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and let's merge the Cisco Live branch into the main branch. So this is very similar to a Git repository where we commit the change, we merge the branch, that creates a job, we can verify that the job has completed, which it has, we have merged our Cisco Live branch. That creates a notification because that kicked off the workflow in the automation controller. And the notification is telling us that we need to review the drift. So that's what we'll do now. Um, we'll click into here and we can see the actual output of the drift check, which is a diff. So the first part of this is we use the resource module for NTP in check mode. So check mode allows us to effectively run a dry run to see what it would change. So here we can see we would add the two valid servers and remove the 1.1.1 because that's a mistake. But our before and our after is 1.1.1 because we're not applying the change. We're running it in, in the um, check mode and we're running it in replace, which will allow us to add and remove configurations but that'll be in the next um, run after the approval where we'll run this in run mode, right? So this is what it looks like in the task as a check mode. Now here is the actual task for the diff. So we use the fax underscore diff module from the utils collection. Our before is the running config in the catalyst switches and our after is that NTP dictionary, that payload that was sent in the webhook and it was from EDA converted into extra variables that were passed to the automation controller to use in our workflow and effectively in the job template that runs the playbook um, to uh, provide this diff check. So before is the running config, the after is the netbox config context that was passed in the webhook. All right, let's look at the output of the diffs for the drift check. We can see that in leaf two here, we have an empty dictionary. So the dash is the before, that is the running config on the device. And then the after is the netbox intended config that was passed from the webhook. So we've got the 2.1 and 2.2 that need to be added, but they haven't been added yet because um, we ran this in check mode. So the second one here is leaf one where we, from the command line, we added the incorrect NTP server to 1.1.1 and we need to add the 2.1 and the 2.2. So that is the after again is the netbox intended config that was passed as extra variables from the webhook. We move down to the spine and we can see there we have um, an empty, no NTP servers and we need to add the two good NTP servers. This here is for our review for the approval. We can see that we need to add the two, um, those commands for the, the leaf one or leaf two. Leaf one, we need to remove 1.1.1 and add the two good ones. And then in the spine, we need to add the two good ones. So now we feel comfortable. We can, um, we can look at the details just to show you um, the config that was sent. So this NTP underscore config is a dictionary that represents that structured data configuration that was passed into the NTP resource module from the raw data from the webhook. We feel comfortable. We can um, approve. So we're the human in the loop. We can approve this workflow and move forward. Now we are running an NTP resource module in run mode. So we'll actually make a change at this point. We'll click into the output of this job for the resource module for leaf one. And we'll see it's very similar in the sense that we're adding the two good servers and removing the bad one, the 1.1.1. One one one. Our before shows the bad one and our after only shows the two good ones because we removed the bad and added the two good ones. And that was because we have it replaced as the state. And now as we look at our workflow, we have completed the workflow. So, yay, we have successfully updated a configuration based off of our source of truth and applied it to our devices and resolved the issues. We can check that here. We can see from Leaf1, we have the good NTP servers. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.